ladies and gentlemen once again welcome back to our channel and the topic for today's presentation is JCL JCL stands for job control language and it is primarily used on IBM mainframe today's JCL tutorial is divided into four section first one is JCL introduction where we'll cover the basics of JCL the second section of the tutorial is JCL structure overview where I'll going to explain what are the different set of parameters or set of statements you require to write a simple JCL. The third section is JCL execution stages where I'm going to uh, explain what are the different set of stages or probably a life cycle of a uh, JCL starting from uh, submitting a JCL till you get your output. And the last section is JCL example where I'm going to explain how you can execute a COBOL program with the help of a JCL. So last section is primarily a COBOL JCL tutorial. So before I start with today's JCL tutorial, I would request you all to do subscribe to our channel because we need your support to grow our channel. And in case if you have already subscribed to our channel, then I would like to say a big thank you for your support. So ladies and gentlemen, let's begin our step by step JCL tutorial with introduction. Today, mainframe computers play a very crucial role in the daily operation of the most of the world largest corporation. It includes many organizations from different sectors whether it's banking and financial services or aviation industry or retail sector. And the advantage of mainframe system is their ability to process a high volume of data. So before moving to the definition of the term JCL, I would like to discuss two important terms. First one is online processing and batch processing. Normally, mainframe applications are divided into two categories. First one is online processing. So the transaction processing that occurs interactively with the user is referred to as online transaction processing. For example, you have a screen through which you are accessing customer record and you are updating any information in the database that is related to customer. On the other hand, you have batch processing that is the execution of one or more program in a specific sequence with no interaction by user is termed as batch processing. For example, you want to calculate the yearly tax on, uh, on certain customers. So you run a suite of program with all the input files and the output files so that the report should be generated and there should not be any interaction with the user. So you just give the input set of programs, run the job and you'll get the final output. For example, a report or maybe uh, a file that can be consumed in a different job. Now let's move on to the term JCL. So JCL stands for job control language. JCL is basically the command language of the ZUS operating system. It describes a job by providing information that identifies the program that needs to be executed and the data that needs to be processed. You can consider job as a unit of work. For example, generating an annual report of failed transaction. So generating a report is actually a unit of work. For that you need a set of programs and probably a set of input data that would be feed into that particular job to generate that report. So in nutshell, JCL actually tells the operating system what needs to be done. Now let's move on to the next section that is JCL structure. So a JCL is made up of three kinds of statement. First one is job statement. Second one is EXE statement. Third one is DD statements. And JCL statements are coded as 80 byte records out of which first 72 bytes are available for JCL code and last 8 bytes are reserved for sequence number. Now let's look at the JCL structure in detail. So first thing is identifier which begins in column 1 and there are four different kinds of identifier. So if you have two forward slash followed by name and operator so it would be a job statement your DD statement or probably an EXE statement. Similarly, if you have one forward slash and asterisk, so this would be a mark as end of the data. For example, you're just passing some data in SYSIN. Then you have two forward slash and asterisk. So this is normally used to include your comments. 
and the last one is two forward slash followed by all blanks so it is treated as null or end of the job so the next is name and it begins in column 3 it generally identify the statement so that other statements and system can refer to it and it is generally of 8 bytes or probably less than that next one is operation and it is basically a, a specific code it could be a job it could be a exe or it could be a td right and next one is parameters so in parameters you will be having a keyword uh, parameter or a positional parameter for example message class then you have message level notify okay and the important thing is like in case if you're coding more than one two or three which cannot be expand in that particular line so the continuation should start uh, anywhere in the column 4 through 16 if it is go beyond 16 then it would result in JCL error and the last one is sequence and it is basically a sequence number for that particular JCL and it starts from 73 to 80 which is generally not used anymore now let's move on to the next section that is JCL execution stages in this section we'll focus on what are the different stages right from submitting a job till you get an output of that particular job so before moving to different stages of JCL let's talk about job entry subsystem so the job entry subsystem is a component of IBM mainframe ZOS operating system and it is actually responsible for managing patch workload it actually keeps the track of job that enter the system present them to ZOS for processing and send their spool output to the correct destination now let's quickly look at the different stages of JCL so the first stage is that you prepare your JCL you include all your steps and you submit that job the next phase is conversion phase and in this phase just to use a converter program to analyze each job JCL statement it also expand uh, proc from the procedure libraries and in case if there is no error then it will queue up the job for execution now let's move on to third stage that is processing phase and in this phase the initiator examine the JAS pool select an appropriate job for execution execute the job in its address space and return to the JAS pool for next job and remember the operating system does not necessarily process a job in the order in which they are submitted instead JAS examine the jobs in the job queue and prioritize the work by selecting the most important jobs to be executed first and there are two important parameters first one is job class and the second one is priority based on which it decides which job needs to be executed first now let's move on to the last phase that is output phase and in this phase once the job is completed jazz to send the job output either to a printer or to a spool based on the output class which is specified in your job now let's move on to the next section that is JCL example and in this section we will focus on how to execute a COBOL program with the help of JCL so it's kind of a COBOL JCL uh, tutorial right so let's start if you just see uh, the top section of uh, the sample JCL so first two column is an identifier then you have name which is starting from position number three for eight byte then you have an operation it is job exe and dd statements i hope you remember in my previous slide i've mentioned that and in the parameter section you have different positional and keyword parameters right message class message level notify right similarly so if you just look at the line number three four and five so it is basically a comment that says jcl to run tremp 001 COBOL program so line number six you have step 01 exe pgm equals to program name so this is the first step of a jcl and remember i've used step 01 as a name of this particular step so if you want you can put any name so it's not a hard and fast rule that you should use step 01 
from readability perspective i generally use step 01 or maybe something related to the program itself right so just below that you have step lib where you're going to specify uh, the pds name from where you're going to pick up uh, the load module of the program then you have emp mast and emp rept so first one is an input file for my program and it is generating a report so the other file is emp rept is actually a report then you have sysprint and sysout so whatever display statements or messages you're going to display so that will be printed in spool now the last line of this jcl is do forward slash which is actually an identifier that marks an end of the jcl okay if you look at the lower section of this particular screen so you have a small snippet of a cobol program and how exactly it is mapped to your jcl td statements so the program name is tremp001 which is actually uh, used at uh, exe statement in order to specify the program that you want to run through that jcl then you have a file control section where i've used two files first one is emp in which is mapped with the dd name of emp mast and if you see my jcl i've used emp mast similarly i've create i'm creating a report that is emp uh, prep and which is assigned to a dd name of emp rept right so if you see my jcl i've mentioned that emp rept is my report so this is how actually the dd name of the jcl is mapped to your cobol program so ladies and gentlemen uh, the closing remark for today's jcl tutorial is that jcl provide a mechanism for the program to read the input and write output to the requested physical resources it can be viewed as a list of statements to be submitted for background processing or for a foreground processing so ladies and gentlemen this marks an end to our today's jcl tutorial and i would request you all to do subscribe to our channel because we need your support to grow our channel and in case if you have any question related to jcl then do mention that in the comment section and i would request you all to to share your feedback regarding this presentation and if there is something that you don't like then do mention that in the comment section we will definitely going to incorporate in our next presentation apart from that i would request you all to do visit our youtube channel because we have a lot of informational tutorials on cobol kicks jcl and vsam so once again guys thank you so much for watching so patiently bye bye and take care